Good morning. My name's Ashley Thompson, and for those who don't know, I'm from Melbourne, Australia. Uh, first, wanted to thank all the people that have done the seven strategies up until now. There's been some really good, interesting ones, and I've, I've really enjoyed watching them. And I thought I'd take a different tack today and focus on a couple of different areas that I felt hadn't been touched on today. So, so let me get into them. First one I've got is starting early, getting out of bed, getting into work, getting things happening in the day, you know, starting with intent. I find that's one of the best things for me is getting out of the gates fast and, and I find that that then means that the day flows a lot better, I get a lot more done and I'm a lot more efficient with my day. Second one here, top performer habits. You know, what's the difference between a good coach and a great coach? So diet, you know, what's your diet like on a daily basis? What are you putting into your body? You know, how much sugar, how much carbohydrates are you, are you adding versus the, the really good stuff? Secondly, exercise. You know, how much exercise are you doing? How good is that exercise? You know, are you getting the blood flowing through your body? Are you getting it pumping through? Because if you get the blood flowing, you think smarter, you think faster, you get more done in your, in your day, you're a lot more effective. Drugs. So, you know, I'm talking about caffeine, I'm talking about alcohol. You know, are you having alcohol the night before you coach? Because if you are, your coaching's not going to be as good. You know, how much caffeine are you relying on throughout the day to get you through the day? You know, generally, if you have these two right, this becomes less of an, in, less of an issue, less of a vice. Self-reflection. We, we talk about IVVM, but you know, what does it mean to you? How do you do it? How do you process a bad coaching session? How do you lock in a good coaching session? You know, do you do it internally? You do it externally with somebody else. You know, knowing what works for you and then practicing that on a regular basis so you can quickly and easily overcome a bad coaching session, but really lock in a good coaching session so you can draw on that from the future for the future. <clears throat> Accepting responsibility for lost clients. So how do you deal with it when you lose a client? You know, for me, if I lose a client, it's my fault. I'm not a good enough coach. How do you deal with that? What responsibility do you accept? You know, if the client left, you know, were they uncoachable? Was their business rubbish? Did they not do their goals? You know, if that's the case, you know, maybe you're not accepting responsibility for lost clients and maybe you need to look at that part of your, of your life. Making coaching about you. So, you know, how much do you know about your clients and how much do they know about you? Because if they know a lot more about you, you're making the coaching about you. You know, it's, it's all very well to, and you know, you catch yourself telling these stories from time to time, and they're interesting stories, but, but really they add into the coaching, because what does the client want? They want you to come along, they want you to listen to them, they want you to ask them questions, they want you to propose some good business strategies, and that's it. They don't need to hear all the stories, because if they are, the ego's taken over. Selling the big picture. So, we do the alignment, and the alignment's a, a great tool to get clarity with the client, we discuss the big picture. But how much, how much insight, <clears throat> how much detail do you have around your clients and what their big picture is? How much detail do you have around that? And this is one of the best things we can do for clients because they're in the day to day, and we, you know, our job as coaches is to pull them out of that and get them to see the big picture. You know, the coaching relationship is always going to have hurdles. You know, we miss sales for one month, they lose an important client, one of their key staff members leaves. These are all the, the hurdles or the roadblocks that are going to come along. And when you know the big picture and you can really clarify that for the client and say, well, hey, you know, we've stepped back a, a month or two, but that's okay. We're still on track for our big picture. We both still believe in this. We're okay. We're, we'll, we'll continue moving forward and we'll continue working on what we need to work on. Retention, not acquisition. This is something that I've focused on a lot in my coaching career. You know, making sure that you retain the clients that you've got, not just focusing on getting new ones. You know, if, you, if the front door's open and you're welcoming all these new clients, but the back door's also open and you know, you're losing them out the back all the time, you've got a problem. And you know, most people know that if you, if you have a client that you've coached for 12 months, 24 months, they become a lot easier to coach. You, you can coach faster, you can get better results. You know them, they know you. There's that mutual respect. It becomes a lot easier. And you know, what comes out of that? Well, referrals. So it, it leads back to the acquisition. But if you focus too much on getting new clients all the time and in the process lose the clients that you've already got, it, it destroys your brand, it destroys your own PR. Last but not least, seeking knowledge. 
You know, I'm not just talking about you know picking up books and reading books and listening to audio books when you need to. I'm talking about actively pursuing what do you need to learn. You know, what are you working on at the moment? Is it time management? Is it business strategy? Is it sales and marketing? What are you working on? You know, go out and seek a book. And when you get a good one, when you get a book that resonates with you, reread it, reread it, reread it again. Look for all those little distinctions that you can pick up out of that that's really going to enhance you and, and take you further forward. Seven strategies. I hope you've enjoyed them and I look forward to catching up with you soon.